Therefore, I will judge you, everyone according uh, to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves uh, from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. I know that we've been studying a lot of uh, about sin and that in, in uh, Ephesians and, and, and Hebrews rather and we'll continue on there. But one of the things that I think that we overlook by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross is that we, once we are born again and, uh, um, and have accepted Jesus Christ, will never die. Our bodies will die, but we will never die. And that's one of the, one of the wonderful things that uh, uh, has happened as a result of that. Will you please turn with me uh, to our screen for uh, our, our first song, Awesome in This Place. As I come into your presence, past the, the gates, gates of grace, grace into your, your sanctuary. We're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance. I see the fullness of your grace. And I can only bow down and say. Thank you. 
I pulled that up and Polly said, I used to sing that in my church in Indonesia. Will you please rise as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Please rise. Dear most wonderful and sovereign God and Father, what a joy is our lives knowing you are our God and that you love us and care for us and watch over us every day. Our most wonderful life is walking with you daily, talking with you daily, worshiping you daily. It is so awesome that when we stand in darkness, knowing not the way, that you can be right there with us, ready to light the pathways of truth and life. Oh, if we could only come to the point in our lives where we give up following after our own designs and clever ambitions, we would find a joy and a peace beyond our present understanding. You are our God. Jesus is our Lord. And we are your people. Help us to grow in numbers and in strength. Help us to learn the gospel of our Lord and stand firmly on those precepts. Jesus left us here on earth to prepare our home in heaven and we are here to prepare ourselves for his return. We pray to you in a solemn prayer to send our Lord quickly to reclaim us for this world grows darker every day and we are few uh, that truly follow. Fill this place this morning with your holy presence as we come to worship you. Fill our hearts with love and understanding so that we might know more realistically the plight of the lost and help us to reach them. Today, they don't want to be bothered for this world is not so bad for them. But the day will come when their lives will be full of pain and torment for all eternity. Help us for we pray in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we go back to our screen, for On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anger holds within the veil On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is his oath, his covenant, his blood Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way He then is all my hope and stay On Christ the solid Our 
Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalms 10, uh, 2 and 3. The wicked person arrogantly pursues oppressed people. He will be caught in the schemes that he planned. The wicked person boasts about his selfish desires. He blesses robbers, but he curses the Lord. Amen. The best reading of God's word. We have to praise him this morning. He knows my name. Does he know your name? Huh? What? Yeah. He knows your name. What, what name does he know? Haley. Right. Antonio Antonio. Does he know your name? Yeah, he does. What name does he know? Antonio. Mike, does he know your name? Yes. He does. What does he call you? Mike. That's right. He knows your name. He knows all of our names. Our memory verse this morning, we have to change memory verse because we have a new month. And I, I want you, we're going to have communion here in a few minutes. So uh, please uh, start uh, uh, praying and making your heart ready to, to receive communion. Um, um, now the, the, the orange, I think you guys already got this. Know that that's me uh, writing that in there so you know who he's talking about. But Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye... 
shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned to joy. So Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's telling them today, you know, that we, we are going to weep, we are going to, we are going to lament. But one day, one day, we're going to rejoice forever. The world may be rejoicing all around us. Because this is their time. But our time is coming. John 16, 20. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow, sorrow shall be turned into joy. John 16, 20. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Amen. Amen. Bless the reading of God's Word. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning, Cain. Yeah, good morning to you and your mom and everyone else that's here. Good morning to all of you that are watching from home and, and uh, on, on Sunday night at 7 or Wednesday morning at 8. It's good to, good to have all of, all of you uh, watching us. A lot of stuff going on here is at the church. We've got all kinds of kids stuff coming up. We had new kids this week and, and uh, I'm having trouble with one of the buses. Yeah, it's just acting like the other one did when we had to put a fuel injector pump into it, and that's not, that's not pretty, and that's not cheap, and I don't know where we're going to get the money for it, but God will provide. So anybody out there uh, want to help us get the bus back on the road, uh, please uh, uh, either contact me or you can send a donation to the church. I would appreciate it very much. And, and I appreciate the, those who, who do uh, write us, call us, and talk to us here. Let us know that you're, you're watching. I uh, want to know that we're still in uh, Proverbs, so uh, on Wednesdays you can bring a lunch and come to the, come in there. We're, we got one of the, uh, we got the, the classrooms in here, the, the 40, 12 by 40 foot. We got two of them, uh, uh, they were uh, classrooms, they were with the URI school board. Uh, that somebody else picked up, and then we got from him, and, and they're in they're in much better shape than we thought, right? They're in better, they're in good shape. They're they're, they're have uh, insulation and floors, and they're just in really really good shape. We're just truly truly best, blessed to uh, to to have those those trailers, and uh, uh, we're gonna. We're, we're going to do some arts and crafts and have some more Sunday school room and all of that here. So, And then uh, I get to have an office out of one of them, so I'm going to be doing more counseling. And if you know somebody at home that needs counseling, alcohol and drug recovery counseling, marriage and family counseling, or, or, or any other counseling, if you know somebody up at Crawford County uh, at the Correctional Institute, I'm usually there on Tuesday afternoons. And... Uh, uh, you know, have them get in touch with me, or you can get in touch with me, and we'll uh, be able to arrange to go see them. We're always looking for help with uh, for our kids, and so if you've got any talents, and some people say, well, I don't have any talent, but then, you know, the fact remains, most people have some talent that the Lord can use. So if you're watching from at home, and you want to help with the kids and work out, do something. If you, if you want to teach the kids how to paint, uh, or or do crafts or gardening or play baseball or they were out this week playing baseball the teams were and what a what a beautiful sight to look out there I was working over here to look across there and see all the kids I wanted to be over there with them but just as I got ready to move gra Dale grabbed me by the back of the cuff of my shirt and said now you got to get over here and get this job done but I wanted to be over there with them playing so but we'll get there one of these days uh, next Sunday. Mother's Day and we'll have potluck uh, over there followed by swimming so that's going to be our last the uh, high school uh, uh, swimming uh, uh, closes and then after that we'll start looking at uh, uh, going to uh, uh, the campground uh, for swimming uh, at uh, Oil Creek Campground uh, when the weather uh, when they get that open and that I think that there's all kinds of stuff going on. We went skating last week. We're getting ready for the campground and for the kids going camping. Oh, and besides that, I finally got everybody's applications in and sat over there 
uh, at Camp Judson uh, this week. And guess what, guys? You all got your first choices. But I got a couple kids to get in. I couldn't wait anymore. So I still have some slots available uh, if, if some kids want to go. I think Rory wants to go and hasn't gotten her form. But all of those that got their stuff in here, you got your, you got your week. That's not filled up. So we'll have to, we need to get everybody else that's going in pretty quick. Um, Again, we're, we're uh, uh, being thankful uh, about Jean's house and their, the, the, the families back in their home. Jean uh, and Linda Schaefer are kind of back in their home. I think tonight's the last night that the uh, insurance company's picking up the motel room, but they've got electricity back on, and, and um, the, I know the telephone's on because I've been, I've been uh, calling and, and all kinds of things. So uh, anything else I need to mention? Next, oh, what kind of potluck are we having next Sunday? Tacos. I think it's Taco Sunday, right? Tacos, the enchilada, whatever, all of that stuff, all that stuff that you kids like. Well, we're going to have that. Now we'll have to have a, a cookout, and it's getting nice out there. We're getting wood piled up, and we're getting things squared away, so we'll have to start getting the fire ring going, right, Dale? And, and uh, the hot dogs, uh, things going, and you'll have lots of... Lots of fun this summer. Yes. Pastor, I just want to remind everybody out there that we have pizza party Wednesday, and it's Bring a Friend Day. It's Bring a Friend Day on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Uh, any any uh, uh, prayer requests? I know we want to keep Jean and Linda in in uh, in. in uh, uh, our prayers. I want to uh, thankfully my mother's back today after being out for three weeks or so, and and so she's back. She's been in and out of the hospital, and and uh, and Dale's here. He was on the verge, and and uh, I wound up I wound up uh, going into the emergency and have a splinter removed from my eye, and and then I got something going on with my jaw. So, uh, but I'm I'm glad that. Uh, we're all we're back here in the house of the Lord. That's where I would rather be than any place else. So I'm glad that uh, uh, to see all of you. Um, yes. Prayer for Gene and his health. Yes, uh, Gene is is having some some heart problems. So we want to keep uh, uh, him in our prayers, and of course my mother uh, in, in our prayers as well. Anyone else this morning have a prayer? Yes. I'm sorry, what? For Madison, she's having a lot of tests done. Okay. And Madison, what is that you got on your arm? Uh, what is that you got on your arm? I didn't see that the other day. What? Uh, okay, so, yeah, she's got a, yes. So, Pastor Jerry Drake. Pardon it? Pastor Jerry Drake. Pastor Jerry Drake. And what's going on with him? He's got sea, sea drift, whatever that is, but it's serious. He's not doing very good. Okay. All right. Yes, Rory. My friend Heather, who just got out of surgery. Okay, Heather. Yes, yes, Raven. My sister is just going into surgery. Okay. What's her name? Kimberly. 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 All right. Anyone else this morning? Antonio. All right. Good for you. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Most Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the ability to come boldly before the throne of grace. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing that we have when we know that we can come before you, that you watch over us and you care for us and that you want us to be with you always. We thank you for all the many blessings 
the, the, the Sunday school classes that you've helped provide for us and uh, getting uh, at least one of them uh, set up now and, and uh, uh, just, it's just all kinds of things going on here, Lord, that we just thank you so much for that. I pulled into the driveway this morning, into the parking lot, and we had tulips blooming all over. And Lord, I just thank you for being able to come in here and see the, see the flowers and see, see the blooming. For so many years, people thought this place was empty. And I just thank you for the kids and the people who come here and make this place alive during the week. I thank you for the wonderful vision of, of the kids out playing baseball in the field. And I, I thank you for our kids that that are out in the playground and playing and enjoying this, your, your place. Help us to be the people that we need to be. Help us to have the strength and the courage and the finances that we need to, to continue to, to keep uh, everything going here. To watch over these kids and raise these kids up. Not only just our next generation, but the people who will, will one day make decisions for, for our country and for us. Help us to lead them on a, on, on a proper and right path. We not only ask you to be with our teens and, 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 and our young people, but we ask you to be with their parents and all of those who, who guide them. Be with this country and with, with uh, our military and our police officers and, and all of those that, that serve this country, our firemen and, and EMTs and everybody that, that puts themselves, their life on the line for, for other people. And Lord, we're seeing more and more examples of, of uh, that kind of love uh, around the world. We ask you to be with, with uh, Gene and, and, and recover his health, to be with my, continue to watch over my mother. I thank you so much that, that she's recovering. Her lung is, is, is dried up and, uh, and uh, or dried out and that she's able to, to breathe better. And we just ask you to continue to, to, uh, to keep your hand upon her, to be with Madison and watch over here. Uh, I'm going to be with uh, Pastor Jerry Drake. Uh, and Heather and Kimberly and Antonio's uh, sister and all of those who have prayers to, to lift up to you uh, today. We ask you to be with all of those who are watching from home who have prayers. We sing the song, You Know My Name. But even those that are watching at home, you know their name too. They're watching and they have prayers. And we ask you to... to, to Gra gather those prayers together and answer them for, for them as well. Help our audience, our people at home, to, to be the people that they need to be, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to grow and develop. Because one day soon, very soon, you will be coming to reclaim us. Help us be the bride that we need to be. Help us be pleasing in your sight. We ask all these things in the name of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
it's always a joy to stand here the first Sunday of every month and break bread and think about the sacrifice our Lord made for each one of us. There was a reason that I sang, had us sing, He Knows My Name. I think that that's important. Our adult Sunday school class was about the fact that, Mike, if you were the only person in the world that needed to be saved, you know that Jesus would have come and died for you? Just for you. You know that? He loved you that much that if you were the only person, Madison, the only person, Jesus would have come for you. Sometimes we don't feel that love. We don't feel that God loves us that much. We feel insignificant and we feel small and we feel without. But yet we are rich beyond comparison. We just don't know how to visualize it. We don't know how to understand how wealthy that we are. Your life is always secure. You know that? You can't die. This body will die, but you can't die. You'll go to heaven. You've accepted the Lord as your Savior. You've been baptized. You, almost all of you have. I don't know that there's any greater blessing in all the universe. I don't know that there's anything that touches my heart any more deeply than to know that, that our Lord came and He died for us. Each one of us. That He took our sin away. That he kept us from standing up before God. That's what Satan wanted. And I, he wanted us to stand up. Satan thought that he had one over on God. And he was going to do this. And he was going to have stand up there before the, before the throne. And God was going to be back here. And Satan was going to be over here before the, before the throne. And he was going he, he to say, Polly, he, she's done this. And she's done that. And she's done that. And, she doesn't belong to be in heaven. But when Jesus came and died on the cross, he did away with that because that position no longer exists. Satan can't stand and condemn you for anything anymore. And it took him going to the cross dying on the cross, giving up his life and shedding his blood so that he could protect you. So that he could give you life and give you life more abundantly. Jesus sat at the table and he broke, broke the bread and he passed it to his disciples knowing knowing that this represented the, the brokenness of his body. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our precious Lord. We thank you for the body that was broken for us. And we thank you for your love. We thank you for grace. And we thank you for our Lord and your Son, Jesus Christ.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us. From the very, very beginning, almost from the very first word in the Bible. The shedding of blood was necessary for the remission of sins. We really just gloss over the fact that when Adam and Eve sinned, they went and they made leaves for themselves and they thought they could cover them, their sin with their own hands. We try to do that today, believing that we can cover our sin by our own design, by our own making. God came down and said that wasn't acceptable. That they couldn't make something for themselves to cover. So God himself had to kill innocent animals to skin them and shed their blood to cover Adam and Eve. Since that time, innocent animals have had to shed their blood for sin. Until Jesus Christ came on the cross. And what God required of Adam and Eve. And what God required of Adam. God also requires of you and I. And that came by the blood of Jesus Christ. Required him to be a sacrifice for us. Abraham took Isaac to the altar. God didn't make him do that 2,000 years later. Jesus is on the same hill. But his father made him go through that sacrifice and shed his blood for us. Jesus. I can't help every time I come to this, I'm sure with all that I, of my being that when Jesus picked up the cup and he looked into it, he knew that he was looking into the blood, his very own blood being shed for you and I. He prayed over the cup and then passed it to his disciples. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that covers our sin. We thank you for giving us the, the gift of life that will surpass all of eternity. Today, we know we shall never die. But in an instant we will be transformed and we will be there with you. What a blessing to know that, that we are in your hand and there is nothing on this planet, nothing around this planet, nothing outside of this planet that can pluck us from that hand. Thank you for your love for us. Even though we never did and never could and never will be able to be worthy of such a sacrifice. We thank you.
Jesus tells us to do this often in remembrance of him. jump a few verses to Hebrews 9, 8 through 14. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Hebrews 9, 14, uh, uh, 9 8 through 14, if you have your Bibles, please. Was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him uh, that uh, did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in uh, meats and drinks and diverse uh, washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come to an high priest of good things to come by the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled, sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works and serve the living God. I think I'm just a little loud here because I'm getting a ring back in my ears. The writer of Hebrews is trying to tell us the difference between the old Levitical priest the old tabernacle, and the new high priest, which is Jesus the Christ, and the new tabernacle, which is in heaven. In other words, all of this under the law was a picture and type, a type that, that the way into the very presence of God, actually right into the very face of God, had not yet been opened. The way to God in the tabernacle was actually blocked by the three entrances and compartments. In other words, the people could not come only to that outer entrance and bring their sacrifice. If a man brought a little lamb, he would put his hand on, on it and that, as an act of identification since it would die in his place. And then the priest would take it from there. It would be slain and offered upon the brazen altar. The individual who brought the lamb could go no further than the entrance. 
Then, as far as the holy place was concerned, only the priest could go in there. And in the Holy of Holies, neither the priest nor the people could go. Only the high priest could enter in there. Therefore, the tabernacle was a temporary makeshift arrangement. The service of ritual and ordinances was given for just that brief time. People had no ability to come boldly before the throne of grace. Something had to change, and something has changed. We find that change a few verses back, actually, uh, in Hebrews 4, 15, and 16, where it says, For we have not an high priest which can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. In other words, he is just like us. But it says, because of him then, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. They did not have that ability in the Old Testament. I don't think anybody is out there sacrificing bulls and sheep today. Some people have this wild idea that they can pray to God without a belief in the risen Christ. I use this verse a lot. And here it is again. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't say that as a, in a braggadocious way. I don't say that aggrandizing. I just tell you and everybody that because Jesus said it, I have to believe it. And I cannot believe something different than that even if I want to. That's what Jesus said. No man cometh unto the Father. Now Christ can bring us to God, but he only can bring us there. He's the only one who can. No man cometh unto the Father, he said, but by me. S such is real worship. A real worship will lead to service. We want to live our lives without worshiping God, but the whole thing of Jesus coming on the cross and bringing us back to him is about worship. It's about a necessity, a requirement for us to worship. Once we get into the presence of God, there will be no problem about serving our Lord and our God. Somebody told me the other, other day that they're so thankful to, to come to church and be in church. They got something to do. They used to do this one thing and then go back to watching television and go, you know, get a call and go do that one thing and go back to television. Now they have a life. They have something to do. This is my life. It's out here all the time and other people. And I don't know what to do with my life other than spend it working in, 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 in service of the Lord and doing the things. We approach a holy God today on the basis of a crucified Savior. He alone can cause us to worship. In other words, we need to worship, and we need to worship through Him. That is the reason for Paul's writing to the Ephesians. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, notice the first thing Paul speaks of after being filled with the Spirit. He tells us, speaking uh, to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's what we are doing here. That's part of part of the worship. Uh, uh, Ezra tells us that we need to read the scripture. That's the second part of what we do when we come here, as we read the scripture. But we we sing praises. We we read the psalms. We we have a melody in our heart, and that's praise. That is worship. The greatest thrill in the world for a child of God is to be filled with the Spirit of God and to have a Spirit of God take the things of Christ and make them real to us. What joy that brings to our hearts. If you have been in the presence of God to worship, you will have joy in your heart and you will have a song on your heart as well. Some of us, on the other hand, have difficulty getting that song to our lips. We have seen five things so far concerning the sanctuary here on earth. I want to touch on those. It was, it was on earth. It was a worldly sac uh, sanctuary. That is, it was made of earthly things, material things. It was erected on this earth down here. Two, it was built but a shadow of things to come. 
We want to get deadlocked in that without realizing that what was here before is only a shadow of things. It never was, was a reality. So many of us have, have things mixed up. We go back and study about the tabernacle and we can really get our interest centered in the earthly tabernacle. But at best, it was just a shadow, a picture of the real one that is in heaven. Number three, it was inaccessible to the people. They weren't allowed. You just couldn't get in there. If you had been an Israelite in that, uh, in that day, you couldn't go rushing into the presence of God. You would have been stopped at the first entrance. You would have needed a sacrifice there and you couldn't have gone any farther even if you came with the sacrifice because the priest then took over and served you. However, today we are a priesthood of believers. And I want to just re-emphasize, but the priest came in and he served you. I know I see that being repeated over and over and over again in so many of our churches where the pastors want to get up and continue to, to, to uh, exercise this, this kind of thing where the priest, you know, you know, you got to go to the front door and the priest did all the rest. That's not, that's not what, what Christ died for uh, because... We become, as born-again Christians and the Holy Spirit coming in us, we become a priesthood of believers. And each one of us has access to God. Because we are a priesthood of believers, we have access to God. This is one of the great privileges we have because Christ has rent the veil in two. He has gone into the presence of God, into the face of God. He is right there, and He is there for us. The Israelites didn't have that privilege under the Old Covenant. Number four, it was temporary. But the Lord Jesus Christ comes down from heaven, dies on a cross, covers our sins with His blood, returns to heaven, and is now sitting, sitting, uh, now uh, going to keep the way open for eternity. Here's the catch. It is open for everyone who will accept Jesus as Lord. Everyone who will believe, be born again, and be converted by the blood of our Lord. He gave up his life and his blood to give us permanent access to the Holy of Holies and the presence of God. We need to find in our hearts and in our logic that we need to have access to God. Lots of people want access to God, but they don't want to go about it in the proper way. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been driving back and forth, and I listen to news on my Sirius satellite radio. There is this, sometimes I listen to baseball, there is this advertisement from the Osteen crowd that says, what kind of God wants people poor and miserable? I became instantly angry over and horrified over such a concept that any human being, any creature created by God has any authority whatsoever to question the sovereignty of God. I am extremely glad I do not live in the Old Testament times. I need God. I need access to God and I need a, a savior and high priest who can bring me into the presence of God. We have come to a point in our society where we think we can dictate terms to God. You know, like change the definition of marriage or change or ignore sin. Say something like, I know God, abortion was a sin in your day, but today it's legal. Well, God, if you don't want to accept me as I am, it's just too bad for you. I won't listen to you anymore. We fail to accept God as God. There is going to be a terrible day of reckoning. And on that day, I want to be in the Holy of Holies, surrounded by God, protected by my Lord, because things outside are going to be so terrible. People are, well, you know, don't believe me. Just listen to what the Bible says in Revelation. And the kings, these are the kings, you know, the, the big shots of the earth. And the great men, those great rich, wealthy men. And the, and the rich men, the politicians and all of those. And the chief captains and the mighty men and, the, and, and, even, and every bound man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on a throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. 
for the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? The only ones that are going to be able to stand are those who have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's going to be you. But you're not going to be here because God's, Jesus is going to take you out before that happens. This is not a pretty picture of things to come. We need a Savior. And the way the world is going right now, that day could come at any moment. Now, no one should be so foolish as to not believe in the man called Jesus. Christ means Messiah. He is called Jesus the Christ or Jesus the Messiah. He is a historical figure. There is no doubt about that. Just as Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar were historical figures, so is Jesus Christ. And there should be no doubt that this Jesus was beaten and crucified by the Romans. That's a fact. That is historical. It is well written about. Another fact is that I need a Messiah. I cannot get into the presence of God all by myself. I have no power to do that. Everyone who can not get into the presence of God is cut off and adrift out in the desert uh, someplace. We are all sinners and we are all condemned. And it is only arrogance to believe that we can make it all on our own. I need to have access to God and the throne of grace. And whether you want to believe it or accept it or not, the fact remains the only way is through Jesus Christ. He has made that possible for all those who believe. I know the world wants to believe that God will change. But don't count on that happening ever. The fifth thing we have seen is that the law was ineffective to change the hearts of the people. This is the thing I want to emphasize above everything else. The earthly sanctuary had nothing in the world to do with changing people's lives. People just came, sacrificed, and went back to their old ways. They didn't listen to their priests and prophets either. They didn't change. So what happened because they refused to change? Well, the Romans came along and killed multitudes of them and shipped the rest off to be slaves of every kind and sort throughout the Roman Empire. Their lives became terrible until the 1930s when it became absolutely horrible beyond comprehension. Those who were killed received the best of it because through time it just got terribly, terribly bad. But today you can come to Christ and he can change your life. He alone can enable you to worship God in spirit and in truth and make him a reality in your life. Through history, people have walked alone and walked in darkness. Because of Christ, you don't ever have to walk alone again. For we are not alone. My hymn of dedication this morning is, I am not alone.
So when you kids go to school, what's the first thing you should be doing in the morning? Praying. And don't ever go to school without taking the Lord with you. Because you never have to be alone. You're not alone, Mike. You're not alone. You know that, Abby? You're never alone. You are not alone. What a wonderful thing. Uh, Mike, would you come up and, uh, for our t uh, tithes and offerings this morning? Thank you. Will you please rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your many, many blessings. We ask you to bless this offering and help us to be good stewards of all that you give us. We ask you to bless each and every person because each and every person it takes for us to perform all the things that we do here during the week. We just thank you for all the sacrifice that everyone makes. Watch over us and guide us. Be with our kids and help us to be the Christian people that we need to be. Help us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all around because those who don't know the gospel will suffer a torment beyond com comprehension. Help us to be the voice that we need to be. Help us to not be shy and not be embarrassed, but to tell people that we, we are Christians, we are born again, that we are children of the living God. Watch over us and guide us. Give us each the opportunity to witness to someone this week, to invite someone this week to, to youth group and back to church next Sunday. We ask you to keep your hand upon each and every person here and all of those that are watching from home. Keep us safe and have happy and healthy and strong and help us to be the people you need us to be. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen.